My brothers and sisters of the Vincentian family, and I come to you this day and we celebrate the Feast of Pentecostes when Jesus Christ um, brings to life the Church um, by way of the Spirit of God, His Heavenly Father. I share this uh, day with you as a way of closing uh, our year of collaboration in the Vincentian family. Now, let me be careful about how I say that. We're closing the year of celebration of the Vincentian family, but it doesn't mean that we stop collaborating Como Vincentian family. One of, the, one of the beautiful things that's happened in the course of this year, with the help of many people, members of the Vincentian family, different branches throughout the world, is that a greater collaboration, greater knowledge one of the other, and a great joy in being able to share one with another, especially our mes message and our mission to evangelize and serve the poor. That's coming to an end this day, but to begin a new phase, a new phase where we're called to continue to collaborate even in a deeper way. And today I come to announce also the beginning of another theme that we want to celebrate in the Vincentian family. It's been announced, you've seen it in the different means of communication, but it's the theme of Matthew 25, verse 35, where it says, I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. We as a Vincentian family want to take this time between Pentecost and the end of the year to reflect on different strategies as to how we, as Vincentian family, individual branches, and then together as a family, can help implement in a greater way that theme, I was a stranger and you welcomed me. Interesting in my different visits throughout the world, I often say to the people when I'm announcing this theme, I myself am a stranger among you. And everywhere I've gone, I've always felt welcomed. Perhaps that's not the case in all situations, but I certainly have felt welcomed. And I think we're called to be uh, for people, especially when they don't feel welcomed. It's a theme, I think, that's strong enough, wide enough, that everybody in the Vincentian family can get involved in. So when we talk about strangers, we're talking about, we're talking about immigrants. And we have many cases of immigration problems in different parts of the world. We're talking about refugees, people fleeing from their own countries to find some sign of a security, and what do they find but walls and fences and being blocked out. What are we as a Vincentian family doing to respond to these needs of those who are strangers and need to be welcomed? There are others as well, people displaced within their own countries, moving from this countryside into the city and finding themselves being like strangers among people of their own country. We can go to a place like southern Sudan, where many people live in refugee camps, people from that very country themselves, and yet they feel like strangers among their own fellow citizens. My brothers and sisters, there are others. We can talk about those who uh, live in the street and people that don't have homes. We talk about the elderly who oftentimes feel like strangers, the children who are very vulnerable and are treated as if they were other than. My brothers and sisters, what are we doing? What are we doing as a Vincentian family to be able to respond to the needs of these people who are strangers? And we as a church, we as a Vincentian family are called to welcome them. Welcome them. We are a church with our own arms open, hopefully open always, to receive those most in need. Their persons could even be um, not of our same religion not of the same color of our skin, maybe not of our culture. All these people, in one way or another, are considered to be strangers, and yet we're called to welcome them. So between now and Pentecost and the end of the year, we're going to think of different strategies as how we might be able to, to work in a way as a Vincentian family to welcome the stranger, to put into practice uh, this, but it's both corporal and spiritual work of mercy, that's expressed concretely through the Gospel, Matthew 25, verse 35. The other part, we're celebrating 400 years of the birth of our charism. That's going to start in 2017. 
I want to announce it now. 200 uh, years of the presence of the Congregation of the Mission, for example, in the United States, and yet 400 years of the birth of the charism. That's happened, something we're going to celebrate in the entire Vincentian family, but particularly two groups. We know that first group was now what we now call the AIC, um, the group of lay people, okay, St. Vincent de Paul himself organized in order to respond to the needs of persons who felt like strangers in their own village, who were outcasted because they were sick and isolated. And so the people, in, uh, by way of Vincent's homily and in, in the Mass that he celebrated that day, responded to their needs, and from that he made every effort to help baptized people respond in an organized way to the needs of others. But it's also the birth, the let's say the inspirational birth of the charism for the congregation of the mission. And that's why we have a, fo a special focus that we're going to have during our General Assembly in 2016, this year, in July, where we want to focus on the question of our 400 years of evangelizing and serving the poor. And that'll be our theme that we hope to develop. And a significant part of that is we do that together with the rest of the Vincentian family. So, my brothers and sisters, this is my last video that I'll be doing uh, with you as Superior General. Uh, but I want to let you know that I'm going to continue to give my life in the service of the Congregation and the Mission and for the promotion of the Vincentian family working together. Because I truly believe that this uh, responsibility to come together in our charism, the charism that has been given to us by God by a through way of St. Vincent de Paul and Louis de Marriac and many of the others who have helped us to live that charism, it's a responsibility that we have to continue to carry on. And let's do it with great joy, let's do it with great hope, let's do it so that um, uh, the good news might be shared with all, especially those most in need of God's good news, our lords and masters, those who live in poverty. God bless you all and be in the peace of the Lord Jesus and courageous in serving Him forever. Amen.